Hey guys, Adam with Moxie Mentoring. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today uh, we're going to talk about predictive analytics and why that should be something you're using as a recruiter. That sounds a little bit intimidating, predictive analytics, but really it's pretty simple. An example would be, let's say for the month of April, you had three different prospecting messages that you used. Um, let's say message one yielded three responses. Uh, message two didn't lead to any responses, and message three led to 10 responses. Uh, in the future, you're most likely going to use message three because it yielded the greatest number of responses, right? Predictive analytics really is just that simple. Um, it can be complex. You can use these algorithms and fancy statistical tests, um, but really what I wanna talk about are just some simple ways for you uh, to use the data that's available to you. Uh, and if it's not, start to track it. Um, if you're not tracking it, really encourage you to track your own data, your own metrics. I'm hopeful that a lot of you have you know, CRMs uh, that, that provide this information to you on a regular basis. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about like, for example, looking at effort. So the number of calls you make uh, in a period of time, whether it's weekly or monthly, number of texts, number of emails, um, the number of touches in general uh, that are made through all uh, of those and including social platforms. Um, so why are those metrics so important? Well, here's what I want to challenge you to do. So collect the information from, let's say, the past year, um, if you can, or if it's only available for three months past, just look at three months. Um, and, and really, one special note that I want to drop is the production for as far as, you know, if we're looking at deals, a lot of times that comes about two to three months after our prospecting effort. So keep that in mind. So what you're doing today is going to translate into production in about two to three months. So just keep that in mind as we look at the data. So kind of a numbers guy, I like uh, focusing on things that are rooted in fact and not just, um, you know, just something uh, that is, based on um, intuition, right? So intuition can, can guide us in the wrong direction a lot of times. So let's focus on the facts. So look at your data set. So for the last six months a year, how many calls you've made each month, how many text messages, how many emails, uh, just in general, like how many touches um, per month. And then I want you to look at the number of deals that you had each month for that same period of time. And take that information and, and really dive into it. One, one suggestion would be create three different graphs. Okay, so let's say on the x-axis, right, the one that goes this way, horizontal on the bottom, you might plot number of calls on graph one. And then on graph two, maybe you have text messages plotted on the x-axis. And then say the third one is, it could be your social touches, it could be uh, emails on the x-axis. And then on your y-axis on each of those graphs, I want you to plot the number of deals that you had for each month and line that month up with uh, the month's effort uh, on the x-axis. So you're creating basically like three scatter plots. So once you've done that, what I want you to pay special attention to are those months where you had high level of production and those months where you didn't have, or maybe you had a fall off in, in production. Based on that, what you can do is you can get a fairly good look at, okay, so if my number of calls is here, um, you know, I look two months, three months out for the number of deals, I can kind of start to see relationships. So was my production higher, for example, uh, during, uh, a couple of months following a heavy text effort or a heavy email effort or a heavy phone call effort um, and start to see those relationships and you can then start incorporating some of those pieces in to prioritizing how you do your, your job, right? So how do you do your work? Um, rather than, you know, intuitively uh, relying on what feels right, um, you can look at the facts and actually look at your production and what's what's leading to success. Um, 
Another thing that you might do is you might want to take a look at, okay, so what am I doing right now? What, what, what does my effort look like over the last, you know, one or two months? And based on what I know from how my effort led to production in the past, historical data, and looking at current data, what I'm doing right now, what can I project will be my productivity in the future? And is that productivity going to allow me to reach my goal? Now, if it's not, I should be able to look back at historical data and come up with an understanding of what that needs to look like in order for me to hit my goals in the future. So take what you know, take what you've already learned, organize the data, and try to find those relationships that lead to productivity, that lead to deals. And as you start to focus on those things that are working for you as an individual, you'll start to crush goals and you'll start to grow your desk. And that's what it's all about. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you take something away. Please drop a comment below. Uh, love to, to get some feedback. And uh, let me know how it's working for you. If you're already doing this or if you're making a decision to start doing this, let me know how it goes for you. I'd love to get some feedback on that. Also, I want to invite you to like our page if you don't already like it so that you can stay plugged in and receive updates, company updates. We do have also a YouTube channel if you want to check us out there. Uh, we'll do a lot of videos uploaded there. And of course, there's our website. We have a lot of blogs. I hope that you'll take the time to go in and, and read some of those blogs if you haven't already. But like us on Facebook or on Instagram and uh, of course LinkedIn. Um, recently new to Twitter, but we're there too. Uh, but uh, Thanks for watching. Take care.